Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Melissa Muir. As promised, we are now jumping into our accessories video series. We are going to be covering all kinds of things and today we are concentrating on drilling and different burrs that you can use in jewelry, whether it's going to be for stone setting or drilling a hole and just fixing things, smoothing things out, Let's take a look now. Before we can jump in too deep about the different accessories and bits that we're gonna be talking about, we actually need to talk a little bit about our hand pieces or if you're using a micromotor. Now, in the case of quick change hand pieces, these are going to accept only three 32nd inch shanks. Now, that's great for the most of our pieces because you can generally order most things with a three 32nd inch shank even small drill bits will come that way. But if you happen to have something like an unusual size drill bit or one that is just the size of the bit itself, not talking about the shank or mandrel here, then it runs into a problem because this is no longer a 332nd inch. So we've got our quick change hand pieces and you can see here I've got a variety of them in my studio. But then we also have a number 30 hand piece. Now the number 30 hand piece is really nice because it has an adjustable chuck. So I can open or close this using the key to whatever size I need, like so. And now I'm ready to go. And this is gonna be good because I can do really big ones, but I can also do really small bits as well. Now a quick note about the drill bits and your hand pieces. If you have a number 30 hand piece, this will open up to four millimeters, which is five thirty seconds, which is quite decent and it will close all the way down. So I'm able to work with very, very small drill bits. Now, if I happen to have a quick change hand piece, however, a regular drill bit is not going to necessarily work for me. And the reason for that is because they have a variable size shank on these. They're going to just be the size of the drill bit itself. So that's where we then get into what are called step drill bits. Now step drill bit is one that has a 3 32nd inch shank on it and then they cut away to create the drill bit portion on this. Now this is going to be great for these little itty bitty teeny tiny things. Um, and then they'll go all the way up to 332nd. Like you'll never find a 332nd with a larger drill bit on it because you're gonna just be taking away, not adding two. So this is going to be pretty good for anything that needs to go up to that 332nd of an inch. And these are what you're going to want to use if you happen to have one of the quick change hand pieces. So then you just be able to insert that, close your hand piece down, and now you're ready to get back to work. So one thing I wanna point out, notice that this has a whole pack of six of these drill bits. That is because these are extremely fragile and are definitely prone to breaking. So when you're buying some of these, I would highly suggest that you always buy at least one pack of six, if not multiples on a drill bit size that you know you're going to be using a lot of. If we happen to have a 1 8 inch shank, which is also fairly common, then again, you're going to want to look at a number 30 hand piece for your flex shaft. When it comes to a micro motor, there is a difference here. When I order my micro motors, I like to have them with a 1 8 inch collet installed. Then all I have to get is a collet adapter. And the way this works is you take your item that has a 3 32nd inch shank, slip it inside of that collet adapter, and now I can put that into the 1 8 inch collet in my machine and I'm ready to go. So this gives me a little bit more versatility because now I can use something that is both a 1 8 inch or the 3 32nd. Let's talk a little bit about accessories. In this case, we have a ball burr. Now a ball burr is talking about what the shape of this head is. Now these come from pretty large sized all the way to teeny tiny to the point where you can almost not even see the actual burr head on here. And what this is, is these are files essentially that are in different shapes and they're going to allow you to do some different things. Now when it comes to choosing a burr, because there are so many options, not only just the size, but also different types of metals that you can get these in. What you need to remember is that the bit that you get 
you want to make sure that it is strong enough to go through the metal that you're working with. When I purchase my burrs, I can either purchase them individually as a master set or a lot of times I can take and buy six of one. Now that is something that I do quite often because as I work through different jobs or whatever, I might wear that bit down a little bit and where it might've started out as a one millimeter head, it can easily become a 0.8 millimeter just by normal wear and tear. It's also good to know that if ever you break a bit or a burr, you don't have to necessarily just throw away this little shank. This can be repurposed into a burnisher, a pusher, any other number of tools. So a lot of times if this breaks, then I just set this aside until I'm ready to turn it into something else. Now, why would I need a ball burr? One of the things that I really like to use my ball burrs for is to create a pilot hole or a kind of a pilot divot for my drill bits. And that allows me to have my drill bit lock into place as I'm drilling down. And then my, I don't have to worry about my drill bit skittering around and marking up my metal. Once I have a hole drilled, I might come back to a round burr and just kind of clean up my hole a little. That's going to give me a little cleaner look. It might also make it so that things can set a little bit differently. So if I'm using a rivet, for instance, if I use a ball burr to create a divot, it is going to give me a much stronger rivet because that metal is going to fill into that divot. Sometimes I need to clean up solder or maybe a messy area or maybe I just need to grind something down. And there are a number of bits that are going to allow me to do this too. So you can see all of these have different heads on them. So for instance, these two cylinder burrs, they have different cuts on them. One is extremely coarse while the other one is a bit more fine. I really like to use these if I need to enlarge uh, a ring band sometimes, or if I just need to kind of clean things up inside of that. I also really like to use these if I happen to have some excess solder on the inside of my bezel, especially this guy right here, because not only does he have the cuts on the outside, but then there are also the cuts on the end of this that allow me to go in and really grind and clean things up. So you can see just by picking different accessories, you have many different options of what can be done. Another example is a cross cut burr. This is going to be really handy for me when I'm doing small settings and I'm trying to get the holes set for setting my stones into. I also have kind of a tapered reamer. And again, this is going to allow me to enlarge holes or just clean them up if I need to. Or sometimes I just use it to kind of smooth away the surface around kind of a rough spot on a, on a piece or whatever else. I can also use these diamond reamers. So again, it's just a very fine taper on this, but it will allow me to go in and just smooth out. I like to use these a lot when I'm doing some of my piercing work and I can't really get into some of those really tight areas with a file. And then these diamond bits can come in really handy to help file and clean up any rough spots. Now, when it comes to stone setting, we have a whole other ball game. So here I have a 90 degree burr and a 70 degree burr. Both of these are setting burrs, but you can see that their heads are quite a bit different. And I'm going to choose one over the other, depending on how I'm setting my stone. So sometimes I want to work and just cut a small seat into a prong, or sometimes I might be doing a tube setting where I wanna cut the seat as well as the whole area and just get it ready for a stone. So it just kind of depends and you get a whole wide variety of sizes on these as well. And once again, I like to buy like a master set and then I'll have one of every size. And then as I begin to use them, I'll start to see which ones I use the most and I can just reorder a multi-pack of each of those. So hopefully this was helpful. Now again, this was just an overview of some of the different bits and burrs that I use here in my studio. And as you watch different videos that I do, you'll see that I choose different ones depending on the shape or the size of stone that I'm using, or maybe a different type of bezel or whatever. So really it comes down to the fact that you have to play with them. Now when you buy some of the different Fordham machines, it will come with an accessory kit.
Now, that accessory kit does not have a specific purpose in mind. Rather, it gives you an assortment of options and items for you to experiment with. And then it will be up to you to determine which bits to use and which ones to not use, or maybe you find new uses for some in ways that you hadn't thought before. So one of the things that you really just need to remember on this is kind of your metal science. If your bit is harder than the material that you're cutting, it's going to work. If it is not, it's not going to work. And then the second thing, you just need to be creative. Start using different bits and tools and see how they work within your own body of work. Now this is going to be a video series, so I want to let you know kind of what we're covering next so that you can get back to me with any questions you might have. In our next video, we are going to be talking about mounted versus unmounted accessories and the different options that you have within that. So if you have any questions at all about that or any others coming up, then just drop them down in the comment section and then we'll be able to cover that for you in the next video. If you guys like this video and you want to stay informed on these, make sure you give us a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and ring that bell to mark all notifications so that you can stay in touch with us. And we will see you guys next time.